Hello, good morning and welcome back to our Portuguese homestead. Today we have a day in the life video. Uh, I just want to show you some of the things that we do on a daily basis. Um, and kind of just our regular old life here on our land in central Portugal. So it's already a little bit later in the morning. Uh, I kind of take it slow, of course, every day. Uh, be, being pregnant and all so um, yeah I just take my time drink f I'm finally drinking coffee again after two months which is I love coffee I only drink one cup a day uh, I, I've always over the last couple of years I've only drank one uh, one cup of coffee a day but I really missed it so uh, now that I can stand the flavor again uh, we're back to coffee uh, and I just eat some cereal and take my time so um, a couple things that I wanted to say before we uh, go on in our day um, I want to go to uh, go on a walk to our uh, mailbox uh, we have it uh, on the last house in the village here just because that was easier for the mailman and uh, so we're gonna do that I want to show you how I make a spinach quiche uh, there's a little trick for it to actually have it turn out not soggy and I'll show you what that is um, and then maybe we'll have a look at the kinsa because they're starting to ripen up but um, yeah my energy levels are kind of up and down still usually I can do some stuff in the morning but uh, yesterday I, ha I did two things in the morning and after that I was just like, ter feeling terrible so We'll see how it goes. As I was making the bed this morning, um, I was listening to a podcast and sometimes people ask me, oh, what's the podcast you're listening to? So uh, one of my absolutely favorite podcasts over the last couple of weeks has been um, Octavia's Parables by Adrian Marie Brown and Toshi Regan. Uh, it's basically a book club where they go through every chapter of, uh, of this book. A Parable of the Sower by Octavia Butler and I read it just as I got uh, into being sick and from the pregnancy I read it in about two days which doesn't really happen that often anymore because I just don't have the time or the energy or the focus so uh, but this book really grabbed me um, for the last few years I haven't really read anything else but fiction just because I can't be bothered to read non-fiction uh, it doesn't inspire me uh, I don't really find it interesting so um, I've, be, I've read fic when I can I usually read fiction my favorite genre is science fiction it's something you might not know about me um, and then in particular I like to read dystopias so that kind of sounds depressing but um, yeah this is also a book about the end of the world basically and somehow I always find um, that story kind of hopeful as well because you see that people live on um, you see that they resist what's going on they're trying to build something better um, and for me, thinking about the future, reading that type of book um, like enables me to think about the possibilities and it's seeing the state of the world, the climate crisis, everything sometimes it's very easy to get stuck in that mindset of oh my god, it's all gonna be terrible and like the apocalypse is here, we're all gonna die basically <laughs> It's sometimes a feeling that can come over you, like, what are we going to do? Um, so for me, it's really helpful to think there's always people who live on. There's always people who adapt. That's what humanity has done since the dawn of humanity. So highly recommend. 
love it and then also listen to the podcast it's been really helped me to I mean, I love a good book club, but there's no book clubs around here. So uh, it's re really been fun to hear other people talk about it and think about the issues that the book raises. Anyway, enough. This is not a book channel, so enough rambling about books. I think the first thing that we'll do is... I've already cleaned the yurt. Cleaned, tidied the yurt. I think... Uh, I want to check my emails and then we're gonna go on a walk. I leave what's left of last night behind. And I need to get some peace of mind. Okay, so we're back in the kitchen, finally, over the last week or two, finally been back to cooking, back to flavor, uh, back to garlic, so uh, it's been good. So today I wanted to kind of give you some tips on how to make a really good um, spinach quiche. A spinach quiche can be quite tricky because there's a lot of moisture in spinach. Um, so I think the main trick is uh, I'm using uh, frozen spinach, which already, then they t somehow there's already a lot less moisture in there. Sorry, I hope this is not too noisy. And if you use uh, fresh spinach, uh, which is also good, then the trick is to chop it really fine once you've sauteed it and then um, kind of press all the moisture out in a sieve or something of that nature so um, really try to get all the moisture out so that it doesn't become soggy once the quiche is in the oven I kind of want to do it really quickly so I, I'm, I'm not sure how many shots of everything I'm going to show you but that's my tip I don't know I don't know I don't know Ja, Maat die vertelde ook een keer, oh, volgens mij was ze met die mevrouw uh, achter de balie. lunch that's very good um, so I would highly recommend trying 
uh, spinach quiche with some cheese and tomato. Now it's time for some rest. I usually have uh, some energy in the mornings and then depending on how it goes I have a little or no energy in the afternoons. So that's uh, cell vie at the moment. Lots of dishes here. Um, time for some rest, some chilling, watching some YouTube. So there are flies in the countryside. They are a part of life here. No matter how clean you keep a place, there's always some. And we're pretty good with keeping them at bay in the yurt. Um, we have trusty fly swat, uh, some of those sticky things that you can hang. Um, but somehow, every now and then, they just kind of... There's a few too many, they, well, I wouldn't say explode, but the, the population grows a little bit too much. So I'm also gonna do some uh, fly swatting. <laughs> So that was today. Somehow it's already 5.30, so I'm not gonna do much else today. As said, my days are extra slow right now, uh, depending on my energy levels, uh, what we want to do that day. We're kind of still waiting for the temperature to drop a little bit. Um, although Martin has been working on the olive trees, which we'll talk about more in the video next week. Um, I'll do a little update on how we're working on them, etc. I think we might have a very... For, well, for us, for the two years, two winters that we've been in Portugal, uh, it might be quite an early harvest. So, it, uh, maybe already two weeks, it kind of, we have to uh, keep an eye on the color of the olives, etc. And also, when the press opens and kind of go from there anyway we'll see you'll see that next week and uh, what we're doing with all of trees in the description box down below you can find our p.o box address if you want to send us stuff um you can also find our patreon um down below and don't forget to like and subscribe I can see that quite a big percentage of you guys who are watching are not subscribed. So don't forget to do that. And I'll see you guys next week.